Hello and welcome to PMI's Uncommon Sense podcast, tools to improve your work forever. I'm Susanna Clark, Managing Partner with PMI, the Performance Improvement Consulting and Training Firm. Our Uncommon Sense podcast is a 15-minute conversation with our expert consultants. They talk a lot of common sense, although much of it is not common practice. And that's what this podcast is all about. We want you to be inspired to improve your business through learning more about the tools which can help you succeed and grow. And I'm joined today by Damien Alvinson, who is going to talk today about the utilisation measure. So Damien, welcome. And can I ask you to just give a brief introduction about who you are? Yeah, of course. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name's Damien Albinson, a senior consultant with PMI. I've been with the business 10 years this year. Uh, and my, pretty much my whole career has been in and around business improvement. So, uh, in my early twenties, I got the opportunity to go on a secondment with a team called the lean team. So no guesses as to what they did. <laughs> uh, they were trying to implement lean in a business that was, um, really not very aware of what this lean stuff was. Um, and then later on in my career, I got the chance to train in, uh, this, the Six Sigma, uh, and the methodologies around it. And, uh, yeah, pretty much spent a large proportion of my career as what's called a change agent. So I was working on projects and coaching people and all this good stuff as a full-time job. So I was quite fortunate in that regard. Uh, so yeah, lots and lots of experience with, uh, things that work. And things that don't work so well. Okay. So the utilization measure. First of all, can you start off by explaining this to me? Give me an introduction to it. Sure. Uh, so it's a, it's a KPI, I guess you said. It's a metric that I've come across in many, many consulting interventions I've had with clients. Uh, and it's typically a measure of how much work got done. Uh, right. versus how much work should have got done, usually based on things like how much capacity did we have. So the classic one is, you know, you've got two people in yesterday and they were here for eight hours each. So did they do 16 hours worth of work? Uh, and then okay. you divide one by the other, you get a percentage. And then organizations often stick a target on there as well to say, in other words, when people are in work, they should be working, right? That's, that's the underlying assumption, I guess, is to what they're trying to measure. And so what is it about that measure that's made you want to talk more about it? So I, it's a, okay. So it's, it's an issue (laughs) when, uh, these organizations are saying things like we want to become a lean business, right? Which most Mm. organizations do. They say, we want to believe, you know, this, this, that, and the other without maybe really understanding what what lean is at one of its core principles, and that's the principle of flow. So, and it even took me many years to appreciate this, uh, despite having, you know, been doing lean stuff. So there's loads and loads of tools and techniques wrapped around lean, some very sophisticated philosophies about uh, different techniques and so on. But in essence, the ultimate goal of lean or to have a lean business, Whatever your business does, whether it's a manufacturing organization, service-based, uh, transactional type organization, is to achieve a condition of flow, which is where the work moves through from one step to the next step to the next step without being interrupted, um, whilst at the same time ensuring that we're maximizing value and then we're not introducing process waste. Mm-hmm. So the utilization measure then becomes counter to that objective um so yeah that's why i wanted to talk about it and and sort of just maybe shine a bit more of a light onto that because it's a it's a challenge i've run into on more than one occasion and with different businesses right so shine that light david tell us what's going on here and what should be going on okay so uh sometimes to enable flow we have to, we have to look at the, the will differently. So we have to start to think about, um, uh, things like rates, uh, customer demand rates. Um, we do need to know how long activities take 
Um, we measure that with something called cycle time. Um, and then we can do things like what we call balancing the work and so on. Um, we can put in allowances for variation, which is always a very sensible thing to do. So if a job takes five hours to complete, um, in terms of its standard time value, you would not want to give someone uh, five hours worth of work to do. Uh, if that's what the average throughput rate calculated to be, because on average, they're only going to achieve that on average 50% of the time, right? Because it's an average. So you, you, you create a bit of a gap. In other words, you create a gap where you don't plan for people to be doing any work. You get these little windows. And so then you can imagine what that does to the utilization measure to causes it to go down. Yes. Because right? we're, we're intentionally not forcing people to have to get on with work. So there's kind of the first clue. And the other problem with the utilization measure, it's not so much the measure itself, because it's okay. It's an, it's an efficiency based measure. And it's, it's obviously looking at, are we getting, uh, value out of our employees? I shouldn't maybe call it value because it could get confusing. Oh, yeah. are people able to do work when they're on the clock? Let's say. So I can understand why finance would be interested in that kind of metric, uh, how that directly relates to the bottom line. So it's, it's understandable why businesses have it. It's a problem when it starts to influence the daily decision-making on how the work should be done. That's where I have my reservations with it because it forces this idea that if whoever is in that day has to be working on something, well, what if the call, what if the customer's not demanded anything, mm. then we shouldn't be working on anything. And if we are, Lean would say, well, that's waste. You're creating now inventory. You're creating things that have no order, you know. Um, so in a simplistic sense, that's waste. I know there are other situations where that could be okay. Too. So the utilization measure, um, it often drives this idea of, you know, uh, just get on and do something. So he, he go and work on that job over there. That's not needed for the next three weeks because we need you to be booked on a job, so to speak, mm. to make the number look healthy. One of the clients I work with, they, their utilization. Uh, percentage had to be above 97% or something, I think, every day. So that, um, the effects that had on their decision-making actually gave them a very unlean process. So if there's the irony in it. It's a measure that's related to costs. And on overall, it actually causes the business to uh, miss out on the opportunity to maximize revenue. So it does the opposite in truth of what it's kind of there to do. Explain that, because I think that's in particular very interesting because I can imagine people listening to this saying, well, surely if we're paying people 100% of the time, why are they working 100% of the time and, and so on? And, and what's, what on earth would be wrong with measuring? Explain right. the bit they're missing. So I, 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 I'll do it by describing uh, loosely a case study. Uh, mm -hmm. of a client I helped. Uh, so, uh, I was in a business as a change manager, as an interim manager. Um, they had a, a, a series of process steps, uh, and the work was failing to meet the demand rates. Um, and that utilization measure was there. It was driving the way in which the people were allocated work. So, and what they hadn't done is they'd never studied the process and balanced the line, as we call it. So they were bottlenecks. There were processes within this overall series of um, uh, sequential steps. Some were slower than others. Uh, and this utilization measure was forcing work into the line, you know. So even when the previous jobs had got held up somewhere, the, the, the people that worked in the early part were just told to get on and do the next job. You know, even though the next process already has three there waiting, give them another one because you, you, cause you're, you only have the skills to do step one. So you're going to have to work on something. So whilst their utilization measures look fantastic, they always 97% or higher, their lead time, which is the time it takes to satisfy an order from start to finish was horrendous. Uh, for them, it was averaging, I think it was 150 days on average, and they were losing work. They were losing potential contracts from customers that said, you're always late to us and we've gotten so fed up with it. We're now taking our work out. So and these were multi-million pound contracts. These weren't just kind of and small things. And so we fixed this by 
studying the process. We did some line balancing work, which actually cost us nothing to do. Um, and then we only released the work into the line uh, at this average customer demand rate, which is something we call tax in lead. Um, and the effects this had on their lead time, their lead times reduced by 50%. They came down from 150 days on average down to 75. Wow. The customers were delighted. Uh, the orders started flooding in, the multi-million pound orders. The only thing that suffered was the utilization measure because the utilization measure dropped down to something like it was in the 70s to 80s. Okay. And I remember a conversation with one of their very senior managers that said to me, uh, he said something along the lines of, I thought you were the improvement guy. So what do you mean by that? He says, well, I thought you were supposed to make things better, not worse. And why would you tell us to slow down the rate at which we start work? Um, and the answer to that was because that was the right thing to do. That was, But it's this different mindset that Lean kind of uh, brings in. And once they saw the real numbers, which mm. was the multi-million pound contracts arriving in their, in their entries, it, it massively helped to silence the critics of the utilization measure. Uh, but I can imagine they it took quite a, it must take quite a struggle because almost mathematically that doesn't make sense, does it? Mathematically that our, you know, lead time goes, you know, halves, but our utilization drops. Over do, do, do you mean it's uncommon sense, Suze? Is that what That'd you mean? That'd be uncommon okay. sense for you. Oh, well, absolutely. You. That's, why I, that, <laughs> that's why I chose you to talk about because you're absolutely right. It doesn't seem intuitive, does it? It kind mm. of seems like, and, and these, as I often find in both Lean and Six Sigma, there are hundreds of things that actually kind of, they're not common sense. They, they, no. we have, they're not intuitive. Yeah, it's always quite a surprise. Yeah. So I know I absolutely sign on to that. It doesn't seem right, does it? Uh, it's the same as the sometimes a sign of a highly efficient process is that people should be stood around with nothing to do. There's another mm. one for you. Mm. You go, what? How does that make sense? How does that even work? But it does. Uh, it's been demonstrated and proven many times. Excellent. Damien, thank you very much for making the link to Uncommon Sense today. That was truly wonderfully set up. <laughs> um, fascinating topic. Huge amount in here. And I know we are literally only scratching the surface of it. Sure. So, uh, Damien, thank you for joining me today. Thank you all. Pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. You can find more episodes of our Uncommon Sense tools to improve your work forever in our knowledge hub on our website or of course your favorite podcast platform and do subscribe so you never miss an episode don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode where you'll find links to more content on this topic which includes webinar recordings toolbox guides blogs and infographics and our training page you can always drop us a line on team at pmi.co.uk and arrange a time to have a call to talk about how these tools can help you in your organization. We'd really love to hear from you.